In this tutorial, we're going to add some dynamic text to our button here. So let's double click on it and go inside the timeline and let's locate the dynamic text layer that we created. And you'll see it only has one um, uh, keyframe right now. And we're going to create some dynamic text. So I'll give it an initial look, which is white, trebuchet, 16 point. Um, a couple other things that I want to do, make sure that it's, I'm going to use the align center. So any text that I put here in the center will, will work and also I'm going to click off this button which allows that text to be selectable so um, I actually can't do that until I create my text so let me create my text field and I'll just put in sample right now as the text and I'm going to move that down just a little bit so it's basically centered in my button and let's make sure that that selectable button is turned off and the last thing that I want to do is embed the fonts. So click on Character Embedding, click on Basic Latin, and then hit OK. And it's very important that you embed your fonts for dynamic text, especially when you're going to be changing it with code. Now, in order to change this text with code, we need to give it an instance name. So I'm going to call it Label underscore TXT. Now I can go back to scene one and you'll see that I have um, some simple text on that button. If it's not centered, then you can go ahead and, and manipulate it just a little bit just to get it perfectly centered in your button. Now, if I'm going to change the, the um, label on this, I'm actually going to typically do it outside the button itself. That way, if I have two copies of the button, which I'd like you to also make two copies, we can easily change both of them um, just by changing that text. So go ahead and, and um, test your movie, and you'll see that you do have two movie clip buttons, and they're both responding to the mouse over. And the reason why is because both of them um, have the code embedded in their own timelines. So anytime you make a duplicate of that symbol, it has um, that code for the rollover already as a part of it. So anyway, I'm going to nudge them over a little bit because we're going to create a button um, in our next tutorial on the on the outside of this. And we're going to give each of these buttons instance names. So this will be sample1 underscore btn. And the next one, of course, will be sample2 underscore btn. Now, in order to use um, code to change the dynamic text inside, we're going to create a new layer and this is going to be our actions layer. And I like to go ahead and lock that layer. And I'm going to click on that keyframe just to make sure that that's where I'm putting my code. And let's go ahead and change the text. Now we can use the insert target path tool to locate the dynamic text field inside. So if I click on that, you'll notice that we will find these two buttons there. So sample one underscore BTN, and you'll see inside it, is that label underscore txt, which is the dynamic text field. So let's click OK. Once we've selected that, you'll see this, which is the timeline we're on, sample1 underscore btn dot label underscore txt. Then dot, and we can put in what we want to happen. We want to change the text inside. So we'll do txt equals, and then I will call this button one. And now I'm just going to copy all of that code V and change all the ones to twos. So that way it's pretty easy. And of course we should probably put in some comments, set text of buttons. Whoops, we need double lines there. So we just made a little comment and that, of course, this is on our actions layer. And let's test it out and see if that worked. You'll see now we have button one and button two. So we've actually named our, our buttons outside of the timeline of those buttons themselves. So this is just an example of what you can do. And we're not going to be doing this a whole lot more in this tutorial. 
um, because of the fact that we just don't want to take the time. But this is the power of movie clip buttons, is the ability to reuse the buttons multiple times and change things such as the labels. And you can even change things such as the images and, and possibly colors and everything else inside them just by using code from the outside, which is really, really powerful. So in the next tutorial, let's go ahead and save our work. In the next tutorial, we're going to add a little bit more to our button by um, adding a little bit more animation to it. And you'll see how we're going to be fixing that in just a second. We're going to actually animate this text as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save and um, go on to the next tutorial.